D flip flop is the symbol for the D, type, uh, D flip flop. We've got a D input and we've got a Q, which is the output, and we've also got the clock input, which is denoted by this triangle. We've got the characteristic written in the box, which says when the clock input rises, D is copied to Q. Otherwise, Q is frozen. So let's just demonstrate that. If we make the clock input rise, and we can label the uh, rising edge here with an arrow, uh, D is copied to Q. So in this case, the naught is copied across. So it's a matter of the D input changes, the Q is going to stay the same. So there's no change there. And if we uh, make the clock input fall, again, there's no change at Q. It's only when the clock input rises. Here we've got the clock input rises. D is going to be copied to Q. So D is copied to Q. Q becomes a 1. And if D changes, again, there's no change in Q. It's only when the clock input rises, D is copied to Q. Let's have a look at what's uh, what's inside. Now these can be made using two latches and two knock gates. Just a reminder that with the latch, if the enable input is high, then uh, Q is going to be the same as D. So let's have a look at uh, how this works. So we've got both inputs, the D input and the clock input are low, which uh, is inverted, which means we've got a one at the enable of the first latch, which means that D is going to be copied to Q. We've now got uh, a zero in the middle of the flip-flop. Because we've got the inverter here, it means that the second try, uh, the second latch has got a zero at its enable, which means that Q is going to be frozen. So whenever we switch it on, whatever state it's in, it's going to stay in that state. Let's make the clock input rise. So rising edge here, it means that we've got a zero at first um, enable, the first latch which means that this is going to be frozen. So whatever was here, at the D input is now frozen here and held in the middle. We've now got a 1 because of this inverter. We've got a 1 at the enable of the second latch. And because we've got a 1 here, D is copied to Q. This 0 is now copied to the output. Now if we change D, because we've got a 0 at the enable of the first latch, it means that Q is frozen, which means the zero stays here, which gets copied across to the output. So a change at D doesn't even get past the first latch. If the clock goes low, we've now got uh, a one at the enable of the first latch. And this means that D is going to be copied to Q. So the one that we've got here can actually get copied across into the middle of the latch, into the middle of the flip-flop. We've got a one, it's inverted. What this does to the second latch is it freezes it. So, although we've got a 1 here now, this latch is now frozen, so the output stays the same. Now what we're going to do, let's change the clock input again to see what happens here. So the clock input goes high, which means that the first latch is going to be frozen. So the 1 that we had here gets frozen here, it's not going to change. We've got a 0, In, if we invert that it becomes a 1, so the second latch is now enabled which means D is going to be copied to Q, so the 1 here gets copied across to the output. And if we change D, it's not going to get past the first uh, latch, so it's not going to be able to change the output. So what happens, whenever the, input, the clock input is low, this first latch will be able to copy uh, the input into the middle, of the, into the uh, flip-flop. And when this goes high, this first latch is frozen, but the second one copies whatever's in the middle of the flip-flop to the output.